Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Contrast is an essential ingredient to create visual impact. However, in some cases, due to foggy conditions, poor equipment, and other factors, photos at times can come out looking flat and uninspiring, and something needs to be done with contrast. But how do you fix contrast in post? If that is your question, Stick around as in this video, I'll be showing you five ways to improve low contrast images and make your images come to life. So let's get right into it. But first, what is a low contrast image? Low contrast images have neither very deep shadows nor strong highlights, which could direct the viewer's eye to a particular detail. Colors will also look muted. You can usually detect low contrast images by inspecting the histogram. To show the histogram in Affinity Photo, click Window, click Histogram. In case you are unaware, the histogram is a graph that measures the brightness of an image by representing the frequency of each tone as a value on a bar chart. The horizontal axis moves from pure black on the left side of the histogram through shadows, midtones, and highlights all the way to the brightest white on the right side. As a general rule, you want a histogram spread out, that is, touching both the right and left side with the peaks located around the middle area. Low contrast images usually are not spread out and will be missing very dark or very bright tones. But what are the causes of low contrast images? Some causes of low contrast images are incorrect exposure, as the photo will emerge with fewer unique tones of brightness, shooting in hazy or foggy conditions, lens flare from a strong light source, shooting through a window, shooting underwater, or shooting with a cheap lens. Any of these might make your images lose contrast. So let's move on the various methods to improve contrast. Starting off with number one, using the brightness and contrast adjustment. The most intuitive and easiest way of adjusting contrast is the brightness and contrast adjustment, which allows you to change the number of shades between the lightest and darkest areas of an image. Let's use this adjustment to fix this image, which was shot in not the clearest water. As you can see, the histogram has no blacks and is skewed to the right. Let's distribute the tones more evenly with the brightness and contrast adjustment. Click Adjustments, click Brightness and Contrast, increase the contrast slider. Notice from the histogram that the tonal range has now expanded with more blacks and whites added to the image. Decrease the brightness slider. Notice now that the histogram has its peaks located in the middle rather than at the ends. And this results in a more pleasing result. Are there any disadvantages of using the brightness and contrast adjustment? Yes, if the image already has a decent amount of shadows or highlights, this adjustment can overly darken shadows and blow out highlights. To remedy this, you can use a layer mask. Here is an example of such an image. As you can see, while the brightness and contrast slider did improve contrast, particularly of the sky, the adjustment also had the unfortunate effect of over darkening the foreground. To fix this, let's use a layer mask. With the adjustment layer selected, click the layer mask button. Next, with the layer mask selected, paint black on the overly dark foreground. There, that's a more refined edit. So that is the brightness and contrast adjustment. Let's move on to the next method of improving contrast. The next method of improving contrast is by using the curves adjustment. The curves adjustment is another tool 
that allows you to adjust the tonal range of an image. Instead of using a slider like the brightness and contrast adjustment, the curves tool represents the tonal range as a straight diagonal line and allows you to move control points up or down. To increase the contrast using the curves adjustment, the best way is to manipulate the curve to appear in the form of an S. S curves add contrast to your image by increasing the highlights and decreasing the shadows on the histogram. Let's demonstrate this. Looking at the histogram, you can see the image lacks black tones and is also underexposed. Let's fix that with the curves tool. By making the curve look like a gentle S, more pop has been added into the image. Increasing the clarity slider, which adds local contrast in the midtones only, also helps add contrast to the image without affecting the highlights. Here is the before and the after. As you can see, the tones are now more evenly distributed as evidenced by the histogram. Here's another example of adding contrast with the curves tool via the S curve. Is there a disadvantage of using the curves tool? Yes, while the curves tool is indeed a powerful tool for getting precise corrections, compared to a slider, a curve tool is more complicated to use and requires some practice to get the hang of. So that is the curves tool. Let's move on to the third method. The third method of improving contrast is through the dehaze filter. Haze removal can remove slight to extreme cases of haze affecting an image. Its most typical use is for landscape photography where the haze causes low contrast and low saturation. But it can also be used to improve images taken during rainy, foggy, in other conditions. So let's demonstrate the haze with this image. As you can see here, using the brightness and contrast adjustment does increase contrast but darkens the rocks a little bit too much. The contrast in the sky is also still looking a little bit weak. Using the dehaze tool boosts contrast and saturation in the right areas, the washed out regions avoiding the already dark shadows and bright highlights. The result is a more balanced adjustment. Is there a disadvantage of using dehaze? Yes, the main disadvantage of using dehaze is its processing may at times produce unnatural colors. The dehaze adjustment is also a destructive operation and is not available as an adjustment layer unlike other contrast adjustment tools. So here's another example of how to use the dehaze filter to improve a washed out photo. So that was the dehaze filter. Let's move on to the fourth method. The fourth method to improve contrast is by using tone adjustment sliders. You can add contrast by reducing exposure, adding whites and blacks to the image, or make the highlights brighter and the shadows darker. To demonstrate this, let's work with this image. From the histogram, it is clear that the poor contrast is due to overexposure. You can see from the histogram that most of the tones are located on the right side of the image and practically no blacks are present. Thankfully, this was shot in RAW, so fixing this is easy. Simply move the exposure slider to the left. There, as you can see, the graph is now better distributed, resulting in a higher contrast image. You could also increase contrast by moving other sliders. Here, I'm adding blacks to the image by using the black slider. So that is using tone adjustment to enhance contrast. Let's move on to the fifth method. The fifth method is by using contrast blend modes. One common way to enhance contrast with contrast blend modes is simply to duplicate the layer. Then, change the top layer to your preferred contrast blend mode. As I change the blend mode to overlay, 
the contrast of the image is increased. You can also use other contrast modes like soft light, linear light, etc. There are many other ways to use contrast blend modes to improve an image, but I'll discuss those on a separate video. So there you have it. Those are five ways to improve contrast with Affinity Photo. Although the five tools may seem similar, each of them produces a different effect and works better in different situations and for different images. Try out each and choose what looks best for you. Also, if there are any other methods you know of to add contrast with Affinity Photo, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.